Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Problem number 50, uh, chapter 23, Gauss Law, 10th edition of uh, Halliday Resnick Walker, that's international edition. Uh, let me read out the problem. Figure shows two non conducting uh, spherical shells fixed in place on an x axis. <clears throat> they have to be non conducting because then only charges on their surfaces will be fixed at their positions. If they were conducting, then because of the mutual repulsion, charge distribution will get changed. There is still char uh, repulsion among the charges of the two shells, but since uh, they are fixed at their places, so they won't move. So charge distribution does not change. So they had to be non-conducting. Uh, figure shows two non-conducting spherical shells fixed in place on an x-axis. Shell 1 has a uniform surface charge density of plus 4.0 microcoulomb per uh, meter square. So charge density and a radius of 0 0.50 uh, centimeters. Then surface charge density of, the, uh, of shell 2. Uh, shell 2 has a uniform surface charge density of minus 2.0 microcoulomb per meter square. Uh, other than at x equal to infinity, where is the x, uh, where on the x axis is the net field equal to 0, other than infinity. So we have to find a point where uh, field is 0, other than infinity. Obviously at infinity field will be 0 because of this shell as well as because of this shell. So total field will, net field will also be 0. Note that one of the spheres, sphere 1 is positively charged and sphere 2 is negatively charged. That is important for us. Okay, that is important for us. On x axis, we have to find a point uh, where net field is 0. I'll first rule out two uh, regions where field cannot be 0. Okay, I'll rule out two regions. First one I'll rule out is the part lying inside shell 1. Now remember from problem 45, we already know that field inside a uniformly charged spherical shell is 0. So if we have a uniformly charged spherical shell, positive or negative, it doesn't matter, only direction will change. Field inside is 0 and field outside, it behaves like a point charge located at its center. So big, uh, for these points lying within this shell 1, field due to shell 1 is 0. Okay, Field due to shell 1 is 0. But there will be some non-zero field because of shell 2. So net field is not 0 inside it. Okay, Net field is not 0. In, and this is not a conductor. This is not a conductor. Okay, This is a non-conducting shell. So net field is going to be non-zero. Shell 1 will not contribute, but shell 2 will have some non-zero field there. Same is the case, same is the case for this region. The part lying inside shell 2. The part lying inside shell 2. Well, uh, for the part lying inside shell 2, field contribution from shell 2 will be 0 because it's lying inside shell 2. But field due to shell 1 will be non-zero. So net field will be non-zero. Net field will be non -zero. So field cannot be 0 inside shell 1. Field cannot be 0 inside shell 2. Net field, net field I am talking about, cannot be zero inside either of the shells. So that means we have to look for points lying outside these shells. But in case of shells, we already know for points lying outside the shell, it behaves like a point charge located at its center. So now, since we uh, know it for sure that our point of concern is lying outside both of them, so we can, both of th we can consider both of them as point charges. Okay, we can consider both of them as point charges. So that's what I have done here. Uh, Q1, that is charge of shell 1, uh, Q1 behaving like a point charge. Q2, that is charge of shell 2 behaving like a point charge. Now that we know we have to deal with points lying outside them, so they will behave like point charges. Distance between them is 6 centimeters. Okay, now uh, something important. From chapter 22, Question number 5, not problem number 5, it's question number 5 from chapter 22, the previous chapter. We have dealt with such a problem, we have dealt with such a problem where we had a pair of uh, opposite charges, one is uh, positive, the other one is negative, Q2 is negative. So this one is negative and this one is positive. 
so we have dealt with such a situation and our conclusion conclusion of our discussion there question number 5 chapter 22 i'll give the link in the description okay we have found that field is zero at a point that lies on the side of smaller charge okay that lies on the side of smaller charge so we have to see which one of the two is smaller okay which one of the two is smaller that's what we have to figure out now i have already done that i have already done that first let me tell you how do we find that well it's simple q1 q1 charge of shell 1 is uh, equal surface charge density is given sigma 1 okay surface charge density is given so it's simply surface area into the charge density so surface area is 4 pi r 1 square into sigma 1 okay and that comes out to be uh, 2.512 into 10 to the power minus 7 2.512 into 10 to the power is it 7 or minus minus 7 coulomb 2.512 into 10 to the power minus 7 uh, coulomb and that for shell 2 shell to q2 is equal to 4 pi r2 square that is its surface area into surface charge density and this comes out to be uh, this comes out to be minus 5.024 into 10 to the power minus 7 coulomb yeah so which one is smaller q1 clearly is smaller 2.512 uh, in magnitude this is 5 point so this is almost double okay a little less than uh, yeah almost double almost double maybe exactly double Ah, exactly double so field is zero on the side of q1 the smaller charge okay on the side of q1 on the side of q1 smaller charge so i have taken point p1 at a distance of x from the origin okay at a distance of x from the origin where field is zero okay where field is zero now uh, at this point we will have field because of the two charges q1 is positive so its field will be away from q1 and q2 is negative so its field will be towards q2 and for field to be zero at point p uh, the two fields have to be equal in magnitude well direction wise they are opposite so we don't have a problem with that but if they are, they have to be same in magnitude then only they'll cancel out then only net field will be zero so for field to be zero for e equal to zero at p magnitude of e1 must be equal to magnitude of e2 the two must be same so e1 is gamma q1 divided by x square gamma q1 divided by x square this is the distance and for q2 it is gamma q2 divided by magnitude only so we are, we'll use modulus divided by l plus x square l plus x square gamma and gamma goes so gamma and gamma goes q1 is equal to q1 is remember charge of surface uh, shell 1 so i'll write 4 pi r1 square into sigma 1 4 pi r1 square into sigma 1 okay into sigma 1 divided by x square is equal to q2 is 4 pi r2 square into sigma 2 only the modulus divided by l plus x square l plus x square so uh, 4 pi 4 pi cancels out l plus x square i'll take here upstairs so we'll have l plus x square divided by x square square i'll take common so l plus x square this x has also a square so i'll take square common uh, then we are left with r2 square sigma 2 divided by this i'll take downstairs here r1 square divided by sigma 1 so r2 square sigma 1 uh, sigma 2 divided by r1 square sigma 1 r2 square sigma 2 divided by r1 square sigma 1 so now uh, let's divide both of them by x so this becomes l divided by x plus 1 i'll take square root on both sides so this will become r2 divided by r1 
into under root of sigma 2 divided by sigma 1. Okay, sigma 2 divided by sigma. You may say that why didn't I use directly q1 and q2 because we have already found that. Well, I have done that in problem 5, chapter 22. So you can go through that. It's exactly the same. Only the values are different. So this time I want to do it in terms of sigma. Okay. Otherwise, there is no difference. So uh, this implies L divided by X is equal to 1. We'll shift to this side. R2 divided by R1 under root of modulus of sigma 2 divided by modulus of sigma 1 minus 1 here. X I'll take upstairs and all of this downstairs. Okay. X upstairs and all of this downstairs. So what we'll get is X is equal L divided by L divided. All of this downstairs R2 by R1 R2 divided by R1 under root of sigma 2 divided by sigma 1 only the modulus minus 1. Minus one or plus one? Minus one. So now uh, let's substitute the values. Okay, let's substitute the values. L is given is six centimeters. I'll keep it as centimeters. So x will get also in centimeters. R two and R one. R two is given two centimeters, and R one is given zero point five centimeters. Then under root of sigma two is given. Uh, 2 micro coulomb I guess yeah minus 2 micro coulomb per meter square but we are to use only magnitude so 2 micro coulomb per meter square divided by sigma 1 is given sigma 1 is 4 plus 4 micro coulomb we have to use modulus so 4 micro coulomb per meter square micro coulomb per meter square will get cancelled out so we don't need to convert anything minus 1 okay minus 1 so this is what we have to figure out so x comes out to be x comes out to be 3.3 centimeters 3.3 centimeters not one thing we are not over yet not one thing in our coordinate system point p is lying on the negative side so uh, if we use x along with the sign it has to be negative of 3 point whatever we found so with sign with sign x is so it's kind of we got this as modulus 3.3 centimeters with sign it is minus 3.3 centimeters minus 3.3 centimeters is that fine that'll do for this session